So President Biden and the White House finally seem serious about taking care of their problem with young voters. Let's talk about it in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. I'm also a lawyer and an academic, and I'm here to help you stand up to the BS of the MAGA crowd. So for months now, the White House has been extending the pauses that it's been imposing upon student loan payments. The idea of pausing these loan payments first came up during the initial stages of the pandemic. As the economy was going into recession, the idea was that young people if they were burdened with having to make these student loan payments, would actually be hurt in their efforts to try to kind of get the economy going again. We didn't want young people spending the limited funds they had available during the recession on paying student loan payments. Instead, we wanted them spending it on things that would actually get economic activity going. As we're all aware right now, the student loan debt burden across the United States is over $1.6 trillion. That's more than people owe in car loans. 43 million people across the United States have student loan debt, myself included, by the way. And the average amount of debt that's owed is $37,000. Now you can see what a burden that would be on people's finances, especially early on in life, where they're trying to save up money for a house, start their lives, save up for a marriage. Especially early on in their careers, they might not be earning the kind of money that they'll earn in their prime working years later on in their life. What's more is I know many people my age in their mid to late 50s who are still making student loan payments. This ends up being a burden for people as they're trying to save for retirement, which then creates a problem for society as a whole, where you're going to have retirees not necessarily able to pay their bills. Now, back when I was working as a bankruptcy attorney, I proposed an idea to deal with this student loan debt burden that at least would have addressed it in one way, shape or form. And what that was is to make it so that student loans could be discharged in bankruptcy. You see, student loans are one of the few kinds of debt that you cannot get rid of by filing bankruptcy. Where that idea originally came from was the concern that people were going to go to medical school, run up a bunch of student loan debt, and then file bankruptcy and earn tons of money as a doctor and not pay back any of that student loan debt. What has actually happened, though, is that this has become a huge burden on people oftentimes who go to technical schools like truck driving school or cosmetology school or something like that and often earn relatively little money coming out of these schools. And what's more is it's become an especially large burden for those people who never finish college, who might incur a lot of student loan debt, but end up not being able to complete the schooling, resulting in them not having the advantages that the degree would confer on them to help them actually pay back the debt. And finally, to make matters even worse, you have the whole for-profit educational system promoted by my fellow Michiganian Betsy DeVos, where a lot of these schools have actually engaged in fraud to bring students in, making promises that they know they can't deliver on while taking advantage of the fact that these students are able to borrow basically unlimited amounts of student debt. So the idea of canceling student debt has actually been something that's been gaining currency over the past few years. One of the primary advocates, of course, for it has been Senator Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts, who, along with AOC and the squad, have been advocating for the cancellation of as much as $50,000 in student loan debt. Now, President Biden isn't quite enthused about that much debt forgiveness, but he's been talking about canceling at least $10,000, which would be a substantial amount, especially when the average amount owed by most people is $37,000. What's more, as the Biden administration has certainly taken steps to undo a lot of what the Trump administration had done, and they've worked to make it easier for people who've been defrauded by some of these for-profit schools to get out from under the student loan debt that's been burdening them. Now, student loan debt, you have to remember, is kind of unique when we talk about some of these debts and the fact that most of the money is actually owed to the federal government. As a result, getting rid of it is really something very easy for the federal government to do. And in fact, it's clear that much of the student loan forgiveness could be something done by President Biden, essentially with the stroke of a pen through an executive order. So you can imagine how pleased all of us are to see that President Biden is starting to take this seriously and starting to consider actually moving forward with student loan debt forgiveness. Now, aside from the fact that this is good for the economy and will essentially lift a burden off people trying to do nothing more than better themselves so they're able to get an education and contribute to the economy, it's actually going to be good politics for the Democrats. I mean, consider this. Polling has shown that President Biden's 
poor approval ratings are actually driven largely by a drop in approval among young people. This is a big concern because, of course, young people tend to be more progressive and more accepting of diversity than the older generations. And in fact, part of the idea that the Democrats in the long run are going to be well positioned to take a majority position is the fact that young people tend to be so much more accepting and so much more progressive than older people. So as older people die off, younger people come into the fore, it's only going to increase the acceptance of the progressive policy positions. The problem, and this has always been a problem with young people, is that they only vote sporadically. And in fact, up until 2018, the number of young people voting in each election has been going down ever since 18-year-olds were first given the right to vote. That all changed back in 2018 when young people, outraged over the behavior of the Trump administration, turned out and voted in droves and essentially were the key group in helping push the Democrats over the top and taking back control of the House of Representatives. Young people also were critical in helping President Biden get elected. Now, again, they were largely motivated by their outrage over Donald Trump. I mean, after all, Biden is not like President Obama. He's not the type of figure who is inspiring to young people. And as a result, unlike his fellow septuagenarian, Bernie Sanders, young people don't feel the enthusiasm to get out and vote for him. I think that that fact is reflected in President Biden's recent drop in the polls. Now, obviously, in the next election, it's going to be critical for Democrats to make the case that there's a lot at stake and good reason for young people to get out and vote. Certainly, when we look at some of the social issues and the attacks on education that the Republicans have been engaging in, that would certainly seem to be red meat for this group of potential Democrats. But a negative campaign isn't going to do it in and of itself. We also need to give young people a positive message, some reason that they should get out and vote in favor of the Democrats. Like most Democrats, I think young people have been somewhat disappointed with the amount that the Biden administration has been able to deliver. Again, like most Democrats, they're also frustrated with the Biden administration's inability to pass the Build Back Better bill or election reform legislation. Now, we don't need to get into that. We know that it's not President Biden's fault. We know that Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema suck. You know, that's neither here nor there. But the reality is we need to give the young people something to give them some kind of reason to be enthused about the Democrats. Now, I spoke the other day about how cannabis reform legislation could be one avenue here. But certainly, I think something that would be really encouraging to young people is student loan forgiveness. That's something substantive that Democrats will be able to point to and say quite specifically that President Biden and the Democrats delivered on while the Republicans stood in the way. And that is exactly the kind of message that is going to encourage young people to come out and vote in the next election. Because, of course, the biggest concern that we're going to have in terms of Democrats holding on to the House and Senate in the next election and maybe winning a f couple of these key governorships like in Texas and Georgia would be whether young people turn out to support us the way they did in 2018 and 2020. If you want to find out more about some of the issues I think Democrats need to focus on so that they're able to prevail in the 2022 midterm elections, check out this video over here that I did. All is not lost in 2022. And in fact, most of the predictions are that Democrats actually have an outside chance of being able to hold on to both the House and the Senate. And if they do, watch out, especially if we're able to pick up a couple extra seats for the Senate, such as in Wisconsin or Pennsylvania, where we have great prospects. And with the Republicans in the Missouri Senate race about to nominate an extremely unpopular former governor as their Senate candidate, if we're able to pick up a couple extra seats in the Senate, then it will make Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin irrelevant, and we'll finally be able to pass all the kinds of legislation that we've been hoping for. So check out that video. I'll see you then. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.